Greetings and welcome back to our video series on the parables of Jesus. We're continuing a look at what have been called earthly stories that have heavenly meanings. They are simple stories that are designed to teach a moral or a spiritual lesson. Jesus used them throughout his ministry and they teach us even to today. The story we're going to look at in this lesson is one of the more familiar stories that Jesus told, but I really have never thought of it as a parable. Yet when you start to look at it, it does fit the definition of an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the parable of the lamp or the parable of the hidden lamp. Again, as we have seen in the past, this parable is included in multiple Gospels. In fact, it's included in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But the timing and the chronology of where this story falls in each of the Gospels may be different. Now, this may give credence to an assumption that parables may have been told more than once and may have multiple meanings depending upon the context in which they were told. And when you think about it, it makes sense. Jesus uh, may have used similar stories at different times to designate a specific lesson. Truth never changes, but crowds and circumstances can change. So, there may be a reason for, again, the same story, but a different application. Again, as we look at this, the wording in Mark and Luke's account is very similar and may even be applied to uh, the similar lesson. But in Matthew's account, and that's the one that we're going to spend our time on in this lesson, the one in Matthew's account, the language is different and the context is different. So I think that the application may be different as well. You can find a similar story in Mark chapter 4 verses 21 through 25 and in Luke chapter 8 verses 16 through 18. But for this lesson, we're going to take a look at Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 through 16. Jesus says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now, what is this all about? Let's start with the setting of the story. Matthew's account of the, this parable takes place during what has been called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus had been making a lot of headway early on in his ministry. In fact, in setting up the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew paints a very interesting picture. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 24 and 25, he says, The news about him, about Jesus, spread throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all who were ill, those suffering with various diseases and pains, demonics, uh, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. Large crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. So what we see here is that in the beginning of his ministry, Jesus is drawing on a, a vast group and really probably a large number of people. So as we get to Matthew chapter 5, Jesus sits down with the crowd and he starts to chat. Now, before we get too deep into Matthew's account, it appears that the placement of this parable in Mark and Luke comes later than the one in Matthew. We mentioned that earlier, but I want to touch on it just very briefly as we talk about the setting. In Jesus' own interpretation of the message, his explanation in Mark and Luke is different than the one in Matthew. The one in, in Mark and Luke seem to relate to how Jesus has made his ministry and his presence public, and there's an obligation for people to accept him. In Matthew's account, the message seems to focus more on the disciples' lifestyle. Again, the story is very much the same, but the application and the meaning seems to be different. We're going to focus on Matthew's account. 
When we get into the story in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus seems to, seems to blend two illustrations into one point. He talks about a city set on top of a hill cannot be hidden. Again, think about this for just a second. Have you ever been in an area where there's a city that sets above the rise? And, um, you know, you can see that city from a long ways off, especially at nighttime. It is unique from the area around it. In fact, not only does it stand out, it's intended to draw attention to itself. It's not just something that is there just because of luck or because uh, it just sprung up. Very possibly, it was set there because not only was that the best place for it, but also it might draw attention to itself. If you're a traveler, if you're somebody there trying to do business, whatever. But the city set on a hill is there for a reason, and it's not going to be hidden. He goes from this illustration to the one that we want to focus on, and that is a lamp in the same way is not to be hidden. Again, think about a lamp or a lampstand or some other type of lighted uh, uh, luminary. The light that it produces brightens up the whole room. That's its intent. That's what it's designed to do. People buy lamps so that they can be seen, so that they can light up the area. You don't go buy a flashlight if you want to remain in the dark. It's something that is designed so that other people can see it. It would be absurd to light a lamp and then hide it. It just doesn't make sense. This is where Jesus begins to explain the parable of the hidden lamp. He tells the people, you are the light of the world. You're the light of the world. You're designed to be seen, and people can see you. And at the end, he says, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Basically, the moral of the story, the lesson to the parable is, disciples have a responsibility to be good examples to the rest of the world. They are to be seen, and they are to shine a light on God. This story, along with the rest of the Sermon on the Mount, inspired the people. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 28 and 29, Matthew says, When Jesus had finished these words, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority and not as their scribes. The whole Sermon on the Mount, was inspiring, and that included this passage on standing out in the crowd. But what does this story mean, and how can it be applied to the 21st century? Let's take a closer look. First off, what was Jesus trying to teach these people during his day? Jesus' message, again, is very straightforward. His disciples have a responsibility to be leaders in the community. Not necessarily because of the power that they possessed, but because of the lives that they lived. Jesus was about to lay out what it meant to be a Christian. This is Christianity 101 in the Sermon on the Mount. Those who followed him would have to be open and obvious in their commitment to him. They would have to live good lives, and when they did, they could be assured that God would be glorified. Now, I've, I've been intrigued by this teaching. Um, the Jewish leaders were very open and obvious about their commitment to their religion. It kind of makes you wonder. If Jesus isn't talking to the Pharisees and the religious leaders, could it be that the common Jews were less outgoing? Those people that were not in positions of leadership, did they need kind of a push, a spark, to get them out in the community and standing out where other people could see him? Was he talking to the tax collectors and the publicans saying that they could no longer hide behind their position as underdogs? If you want to be a disciple of mine, you've got to stand out in front. You've got to be a light for other people to see. Was he challenging his believers that standing up for what is right might cause them some discomfort 
but they needed to stand up and stand out anyway. Now, no matter the particulars, no matter why he said what he did, the message is obvious. From the very beginning, he told anyone who wanted to be a disciple of his that they would have to be willing to take a public stand based on their beliefs. Not to just be able to explain their religious beliefs, but to be able to show their good works as well. They needed to be lights to the world. Now, what does this teach us today? I believe that this message transcends time. The same requirements placed on believers on day one guide us today. The same information, the same story that Jesus taught on, at the Sermon on the Mount applies to us in the 21st century. We need to be open and obvious in our spiritual lives. We have been blessed with a unique insight into life, and we need to share it. We have been given unique talents, and we need to use them. As I thought about how this has been taught and retaught throughout Christianity, a couple of things came to mind. The first one was something that Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, where he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also the Greek. I'm not ashamed of the power of the gospel. I'm willing to stand up and be seen. Sometime later, the writer of the Hebrew letter challenged his readers in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16. He says, and do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Again, the idea is to be out there doing something, to be out there doing good. And when we are out there doing good and continually doing good, people are going to notice and God is going to be glorified. Christianity is not about trying to gain attention to further our own lives or to promote some human-based agenda. That's not what we're talking about. As disciples of Christ, we are called to let our behavior and our commitment stand out in a dark world. Not only will people notice us, but when we do good and proclaim God, we help light the way for people who are lost in the darkness of their way. Jesus says, you don't go buy a lamp and hide it. You don't build a city and then try to disguise it. You don't become a Christian and not do good and not glorify God. The call was for those earliest disciples to take a stand and to be noticed. And that call is for us today as well. Now, some thought and discussion questions. Number one, why would Jesus present this message so early in the Sermon on the Mount? Number two, why is it so important for Christians to live obvious lives? Number three, list three ways you can let your light shine. 